We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right, welcome back to 755 Forever. I'm David O'Brien, Braves writer at The Athletic. I'm with my co-host, former Braves reliever, Eric O'Flaherty. What's happening, Eric? What's up, Dave? Man, we were just talking a little bit off camera. Uh, we'll go ahead and start this with uh, before we get into the Braves uh, salvaging a win out of that series in Seattle. After losing consecutive games for the first time this year, they were the last team in the majors that had not lost consecutive games. Really well-pitched games. Braves offense and a little funk. You know, we talked about the Olsen, Riley, and Acuna all kind of struggling right now together. And that Seattle pitching staff, man, is loaded. Yeah, they're good. Braves went from back from one bullpen Guardians that was really good to one that was maybe better in Seattle or every bit as good. Plus, two of the starters were really good. Yeah, they're start they're starting pitching. Their pitching in general is is really good, but the bats haven't been. I mean, that's kind of the worry with with the Mariners is how are you going to score runs? Um, right. They traded away some good bats this year too, but I think you know you you travel you you travel across the the country and then face that kind of pitching. It's a tough uh, tough task, and there's a few guys slumping. You know, it's not hard to see the series going that way. And it was chilly in the first couple of games. Man, the Braves yeah. have played so many chilly games this year. Yeah. But first couple, I think it was like 50 down maybe upper 40s by the end of the game. Yeah, and the ball doesn't fly there. I mean. No. You got to – I mean, that's one of those ones, though, where I've watched the guys pitch. Like, uh, Castillo got off to a rough start, but that dude's dirty. I he mean, looks great right now. He looks like he used he did for years. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm in a text thread with a bunch of uh, buddies I played golf with in Seattle before we moved out here. They're all Mariners fans, and they I just remember them bitching about Castillo, you know, at the start of the season. And I watched last night, and I was like, what's the problem? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's nasty. What are we mad about? I, my, side, my side pick is not looking – it's not uh, completely out of the question after yep. his rough start. So, last night, midnight, I skipped this trip. I'm going to – well, the first part of it, I'm going to L.A. tomorrow. But last night at midnight, I hadn't heard anything about this, by the way. I'm like everybody else that have found out. Midnight last night. On Bally Sports, I wasn't watching at midnight because the game was over, but uh, they flashed a message that the Bally Sports is no longer on Xfinity, Comcast Xfinity, because add them to the corporate greed gouging companies that have that have fallen out of favor with their carriers, asking too much for the carrier. And too many fans out there or too many uh, um, subscribers out there don't want sports channels. Okay. There's a lot of sports fans, but there are also a lot of people that don't want to pay the 10 extra dollars for Bally Sports or ESPN, you know, which is why a lot of people have been cutting cords. Well, when the new contract was up, Bally did not agree to what Comcast wanted to pay them to be carried on. On uh, on Xfinity, so the contract expired last night in the middle of the baseball season, and also they carry the Hawks. So net result, the Braves are no longer on Xfinity Comcast. I know they went through all this 
I've heard it now for two or three years from different people on various outlets that no longer carried them, that these people were pissed because they, they, they subscribe, they pay, and all of a sudden pulled out, rug pulled out from under them. Now it's happened to the largest carrier of Valley, which is Comcast Xfinity. That's what the vast majority of people in yeah. town still use. You know, a lot of people, there's more and more every year go to streaming and all that. But right now, it's still a majority of people use Comcast Xfinity. I can't wait to see Bally's ratings for the first month because they are uh, for the first month when they're not on Xfinity. Because I have a subscription to MLB TV. And I thought, oh, surely MLB TV will cover it if Bally's blacked out or if Bally's no longer carried on Xfinity. Nope. You blacked out. They have all those rules. They yep. arcane rules, complex rules about blackouts. And you experienced the same thing. You told me you're in Walla Walla four hours from Seattle. You can't watch Mariners games. I can't watch the Braves games on MLB TV, even though I pay for the subscription. I, I would pay. I mean, I would pay an extra 10 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month to be able to watch them on the app. I'd watch. I'd probably watch eighty five percent of Mariners games if they didn't make it a pain in the ass. But I don't want. Uh, I don't want Comcast or Xfinity because my bill starts at a hundred bucks, and if I don't do that game where you have to call and say you're quitting, and then they drop right. it fifty bucks. Right. If you if you don't pay attention, your bill just goes up, and all of a sudden you oh, check yeah, it one time. Me, I know. I signed up as a hundred bucks. Now it's two forty five. Yeah. I don't, I mean, it's just the principle of it that I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want that. I'm not paying that company because it's just weaselly. Right. So well, I'm I was not even gonna, willing to do it Yeah, because exactly. I've done it for years Yeah, because I loved the convenience of being able to not worry about all this stuff. Other people have been bitching about. I could just turn on my TV and yep. watch the games. Watch not worry the about damn finding game because it's you easy. Know? You paid, make right. it easy and we'll pay. And now I'm paying a lot more than you said, because I also get my Wi-Fi with that. But now I don't get the Valley. I don't get the Braves games, which I don't cover every single game, every road trip. I cover most of them, but not every one. So now if I'm home, I'm going to have to check with my boss about expensing it because the only two ways you can watch it, from my understanding, is to get a subscription to Fubo. Or- which wouldn't take my credit card. I tried to sign up with three different credit cards. It wouldn't take any of them. <laughs> or Direct TV. I'm like, I'm not paying $300 a month for cable with all the different channels I get. I get everything. I yeah. watch all the movies. I get everything. Plus DirecTV just to watch the Braves. And it's all complex. I'm not going to drop all my cable, yeah. return the boxes, switch all the, find out how to add a la carte, add all the ones I get. Netflix, Apple, Prime, Hulu. I get them all. I want yep. to watch them all, you know, too. especially in the off season. I watch everything. It's not about the money. <laughs> I'll pay. Yes, it's just don't make me it. work. Don't I'm make old. me work. I like don't make convenience. Me fill out a bunch of. Don't I've let earned, me register. <laughs> yeah. I've earned the right to be able to pay exorbitant yeah. fees for convenience. I'm in the and same they boat. Screwed me last night. <laughs> it, but pay. beyond beyond me, forget me. I'm just not thinking of the average Joe family buys cable. Yeah. And they just want to watch the game with their kids, right? You can't watch the games now. They got to find a new way to watch them. I'm just thinking, is MLB so, why are they so far out of the mainstream and 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 making this easy to watch their games? Like, I can watch all the Falcons games when I don't even want to watch them, right? <laughs> the NFL, you can watch the games. And if you don't, you can straight, baseball plays 162 games. Part of the, the allure of baseball is following your team on a daily basis, it's like a soap opera. It's different yep. than football where every game's so big. You want to watch your team every night, even if you're just paying a little bit of attention. The average, you want it on in the background or you want to pay attention on the good games, but you want to watch it every night. Well, now they're making it so hard. It's inconceivable how hard they make it to watch the damn games. Don't make me work. I will pay, right? This is the thing. My nine-year-old last night stayed up watching the game with me because I put the Braves game on every day, but they go to bed at seven. So they get out of school. They got to do all their homework. This is not really a good time, but he stays up until 9.30 watching the Mariners. He's, he's asking me about players. He's learning guys. He likes Julio Rodriguez. He likes, you know, some other pitcher. Right. You know, he's asking about all the guys. That's how you grow the game is let, let kids watch. You can't watch on an iPad. You can, you're blacked out. If you want to use the MLB app, you're blacked out of your local team. The one team you should be watching the most because we're going to go up to Seattle and go to a game. He's going to have no clue who anybody is. 
because he's seen two games all year. And I had to get a damn VPN, send my signal through Egypt or something so the app would let me watch it. And I, Which I'm I know that's to figure out. I'm going to have to ask you how you do that because now I'm going to have to do this. Well, I thing. probably, they, I, I hope they don't have my, my username because it'll probably get busted for it. But, but let me, but you pay 140 or $140 for MOB network, 120 for one team. Yep. You would think you pay $140 or $120. You can watch your damn games, right? No, nope. yeah. not even. And you would think the commissioner, because he's done a lot of things unilaterally. You would think the damn commissioner, when the, something like this happens, could step in and tell MLB Network, since they are no longer carried on Comcast Xfinity, we will lift the blackout in Atlanta for people there to watch the games till we figure something out, till MLB takes over at Diamond least, Valley or whatever, like that. they've talked about doing. They got to do something. It, it's ridiculous. I tell you what, the only good part about it was, is I sat here, I needed to write a story, and I, I wrote a story where I listened to the game on the radio. And you forget what a joy it can be to listen to the game on the radio because you have yeah. to think about you, yeah. your imagination. You imagine yep. what's happening by the description of the guys. And we're in Atlanta are really blessed to have good radio guys. We've yeah. had them f- good guys forever. But right now, you got Joe Simpson and Ben Ingram, and they're really good. So I was able to write something, write a story today, which it, I did much easier listening through the 680 app on my phone. Or you can do it through MLB's app. You can listen. To, you can listen to radio on MLB app. You just can't watch the game with. Them. But I but it was much better listening to the radio than it would have been glancing over the TV every you know thirty seconds when I'm when I'm writing because uh, if the TV's on, I'm going to watch the game when it's on. So anyway, that's just me bitching about. I, I just I feel for all the people out there because I I get to cover you know go to all the home games and yep. more than half of the road games. So but those I'm four people hours away and can't watch. They can't go to the games and they also live here in Braves country, which is a lot of states and still can't watch it because it's on Bally. Bally's all over the South, Bally sports, South, Southeast. They can't watch on the MLB network in those places because it's blacked out. Oh, there's people here. In, like, there's people in Montana that are blacked out of Mariners games. Unbelievable. Baseball is so screwed about that stuff. Hey, at least we got bigger bases though. Right. I mean, every time, oh, every time that shit comes uniforms. up, some new dumb gimmick, right. To get the, to yep. grow the game. Yeah. All I think of is the blackouts. Like we're doing everything. Uh, we're jumping around this issue as much as we can. But if you just get rid of blackouts, you want kids watching baseball, make it as easy as possible. When I was a kid, it was on like channel six. You didn't even need cable. You could use antenna. You know, you could you could get a little signal and just well, watch the games. I tweeted something about this today. The irony of this is, of course, the Braves, when they were really bad for the most part, they had a couple of good years, but they were really bad in the 80s. When they were really bad, you could turn on a TV anywhere in North America and parts of Central America, South America, and watch the Braves on the Superstation. Them and the Cubs, who were also bad most of the time, were the only two teams you could watch, but you could watch the Braves every night. I watched the Braves out in Kansas because the Kansas City Royals couldn't get down where I was on the Oklahoma border, but we watched the Braves because we got the Superstation. Every hotel got the Superstation. I mean, yep. And if you're on the West Coast, it's on right after school. So if you go up yeah. and down the West Coast, yeah, this doesn't happen with any other team. You don't, you don't say Brace fans everywhere. You don't see a guy with a Mariners hat on in North Dakota, right. you know, or or in Florida, or a lot of Brace fans in the Seattle series, and you know, yeah, some you, of them are remnants from that era. You go anywhere along the West Coast or anywhere in the country, and you see Braves hats. Yeah, I have so many buddies that are just diehard Braves fans, and we're all the way across the country because they can watch it. If you can watch it, you start being a fan. A lot of them my age and older, their parents watched. And the kid grew up watching with the parents or the parents passed it on to the kids. So they've got mm-hmm. breaks. have still got a lot of fans for, for that reason because the, they could watch the games. When you watch the games, you become enamored with certain players, whether the team's any good or not. Yep. You know, if you're you watching certain players, you're watching Murph every night, you're watching any number of dudes off that team that were entertaining you know, Glenn Hubbard, little Glenn Hubbard, you know, you're watching guys like that and you want to see them every night, even if the team sucked and you got great broadcasters, the great, the Braves yeah. had the best broadcasters. So it was entertaining. There was no option like MLB TV back then or anything either. So you had two choices of who you could watch at four o'clock. And there weren't 9 million channels, so you couldn't watch, you know, so right. many different things. So we're not many channels. And the Superstation was one of the first additional channels on top of your regular broadcast channels. Yep. But yeah, so it's, anyway. it's just, it pisses me off every time. It's the first time it's affected me. Cause like I said, I've always paid the exorbitant fees and had my cable and 
and you know the main cable company in that town and this is the first time that it's affected my, me like this so wow i barely know anything about the mariners i haven't watched them in 20 years because it when i'm back home if i don't have yeah xfinity or comcast which you know we already talked about i can't watch them so i watch every single other team except the mariners and i know more players on every team but theirs that's crazy well i got a nice team and uh, I think the Mariners are going to be there all year because of their pitching. It's very good yeah. pitching. And they got a few really good bats in that lineup, Gordon Julio, Rodriguez, of course. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Many people want to get into therapy but are afraid to jump off the proverbial diving board. I know I've been there. But BetterHelp is a great option. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule in the modern day environment. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge if the first one you match with isn't for you. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com 755 today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash 755 today to get 10% off your first month. One more time. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash 755. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Brace scored four in the fourth today. They had a couple of mistakes. Seattle had a couple of mistakes. Brace capitalized on them like you're supposed to do. And so they win the last game of that series. Board getting swept. Now you go down to L.A. If you win the L.A. series, win two out of three there, then it's a, game, it's a good trip. You go three and three on a West Coast trip. It's you'd good. be happy with that. But you got to win two out of three. And the Dodgers are certainly no pushover. And I think looking at, by the way, you would think there's no way Ozuna doesn't get player of the month for, this, for the stats he put up with. RBIs and home runs, but look at Mookie Betts' numbers. And I think he's going to have some, some of that feeling from people who thought, you know, ah, it's a shame, you know, he had such a great year last year and, and Ronald was a, a unanimous MVP. Yeah. And now, so th- I think some people might give fa- some favoritism to Mookie, but his numbers, his OPS, it's a lot higher than Ozuna's. His average is off the charts. Only thing he hadn't done is hit as many home runs, drive as many runs. He's got a ton of extra base hits. And he's out in the field. Up- yeah, yeah. So I think Mookie will probably win Player of the Month over Ozuna, but um, they've. Uh, I'm looking forward to the pitching matchups out there at uh, in L.A. The Braves. I always love seeing Freed pitch out there. You know, he's from Santa Monica. And yeah. He's pitching the and he and these last two series have been his last two games have been so good. Fifteen scoreless innings, three hits total. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to to him trying to continue that run that he's on against Los Dodgers. The so, Dodgers got Stone, Glasnow, and Paxton. Oh, Glasnow. He's I'm dirty. looking forward to seeing him, man. Every yeah. time we play the, the Rays, I think maybe one time he may pitch against the Braves, but he's been hurt like I think every other time. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him. He's been filthy. So far. He's a ridiculous athlete. He was with uh, Pittsburgh when I was in spring training there, and we were doing our physicals across from each other. Uh-huh. I- I'm starting to get old, put on that lair, and you know, your posture gets <laughs> bad. And I'm pale, and you know, like I- I'm just grinding, trying to hang on to my career. And I look across the 
look across the training room and there's just this shredded six foot six, <laughs> just absolute beast. And I'm just like, yeah, if these type of guys are coming, I'm, I'm about done. <laughs> they said when he went to a drive line, they he broke every single they do like a throwing test with all different weighted balls and different types yeah. of throws and stuff. But he broke every single one of their records. Bryce got Charlie Morton going in fr- on Friday. Bryce Elder going Saturday. That's going to be a test for Bryce. Better keep it on the ground out there. And then Max going in the series finale, which is a Sunday afternoon game out there, one o'clock. So day games at Dodger cool. Stadium are nice. That's going to be cool. And let's see what uh, the, the games are going to be carried on uh, Bally Sports South <laughs> and Southeast. <laughs> <laughs> but good news for Braves fans. The Friday night game is on MLB Network. Now, unless they have some other ridiculous rule that blacks out MLB Network when the game's on Sports South, I'm not sure. I think it changes sometimes. I wouldn't be surprised. I think it'll be on both. I think. Wouldn't be surprised if it was more difficult than it needed to be. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You're trying to grow the game. Like you said, people need to be able to watch the games. If you got any questions or you want to bitch about the TV, do it in the chats right now. We'll, we'll read your we'll read your complaints to all the overlords, the gouging overlords at the uh, TV companies. Jason Tudor, I live in Iowa, and I'm blacked out of Cubs, Cards, Twins, White Sox, <laughs> Brewers, and Royals. Oh my God, those are some good teams in there too. That is crazy. This is what this is what we're talking about. That's crazy. That, that I didn't think about that. If you're in a place like Iowa, you're in that overlap. <laughs> that many teams. MLB, what is wrong with you? Seriously. <laughs> you got to like, figure this out. I can only watch soccer in the Premier League. <laughs> That's the only sport I get. And YouTube TV only carries White Sox. Mm. Who suck. Who wants to even watch the White Sox? Although they did go down to what? Swept a series from the Astros, was it? They, they just know. swept a series. They actually swept a series. They'd only won two games before that, I think. I live in Alaska, and I had to subscribe to Fubo for this Brave series because I'm blacked out from Mariners games. What? what? <laughs> like, Why would Alaska be blacked out in Seattle? Seriously, how many? How far is that? <laughs> I'm not going to expose it's another my country. <laughs> ignorance, but, but that's far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that called, considered a neighboring state? <laughs> <laughs> wow that's crazy man so anyway i did something tomorrow we're starting this new thing at the athletic uh stock rising stock falling for like three four or five guys in each category like twice a month we're gonna do it every every couple of weeks i had five trending up and i didn't even include well i did include ozuna i still had to include him and i had three trending down you could probably guess who the three trending down were fortunately acuna olsen and, and uh, riley i think all drove in a run today uh, Riley might have had two, but Riley, like I said, he's shown some signs of coming out of this. He's hit a lot of balls hard. Uh, Olsen, eh. and Acuna, he had two hits today, but I got to tell you, man, the strikeout thing is kind of, is getting kind of crazy. And um, well, you talked about that. We won't rehash all that, but you know, I was looking at his heat maps and his tendencies and all he's missing balls up in the zone, strike it, heart, velocity up the zone. Fastballs. Yeah. Like 96, 95, 96, 97. That's stuff that he killed last year. He's I was not watching catching last up to night. those. I can't remember. I was watching with a buddy, so he's asking me a lot of questions about the game. And he's like, you know, I was explaining to him that when I pitched, I, I knew where not to be more than I really cared about my strengths or anything. I just knew where the hitter could hurt me. And I was like, if Acuna gets a fastball middle away at the belt, he's going to shoot it into – he would shoot it into the right center seats. And he got it. He got it was I mean, it was like 97 or 98, though. But it was a pitch that you've seen him hit out a million times and he swung right through it. And, you know, I prefaced that with he's he's not hitting his pitches right now. But normally if he gets this, so this might be that bat, you know, something like that. And the exact pitch came and yeah, he missed it. Yeah, it just doesn't have the same feel at all. And everybody fans have noticed it. Obviously, they watch the games. They see it's just not the same guy right now. Um, But we've talked about the talent. He's not hurt. We've asked him a hundred times. He says he feels great. So we'll see. And sites, people ask me online, what do you think? Give us some analysis on what's wrong. Like if I knew, don't you think I'm the people that are paid a lot of money to do nothing but coach hitting sites is very good at his job. Cunha makes a lot of money. He wants to repeat last year. They've done nothing but study and everything. If they had an answer, they would fix it. But 
as Sites said, he's just out of he's not locked in yet. He's just yeah. it's just missing that certain thing. And I think part of that was missing so much of spring training. You get yep. behind. Yeah. And then you start pressing. And I think he's been pressing. Because he's not used to failing like that when he's healthy. And I don't know if he's ever had to work on his swing before. You know, like this happens to a lot of guys in A ball or double A where you get into this funk and you have to figure out what's my bad habit I got to fix? What's my key to get out of this slump? And and we talk about it all the time on here is like the great players are able to you know f- fix things quick. You know, like for Chipper Jones, his slump might be two or three days. And then he's got, he knows the swing so well. The young players, you could see him go up and struggle for, you know, two to two to three weeks even or a month or get sent down and have to find it down there. But I don't know that he's ever even had to – I guess he had that rough year his first year back, but – this might, it's an opportunity for him to figure it out and, and learn. Health, that yeah. Was injury, though. He's never been healthy and, and struggled, I don't think. No, no. And Olsen, that's the other reason why I'm not concerned about Olsen because he's a streaky guy. Yeah. We've seen him have bad three, four week stretches before, mm-hmm. almost a month where Snit had to sit him down, for, you know, and Snit takes a lot for him to sit him down. And then he gets hot and he's, and he, he crushes everything for three weeks. So I'm not worried about him. Riley, kind of the same way. He gets out of sync, but uh, he gets locked back in. He could be a little streaky. Acuna's never been streaky like this, where he's gone this long. He's just been always good. <laughs> right. But anyway, I wrote tomorrow. Okay, he's hitting 252 with one homer, 690 OPS, and 29 games. He hit 337 with 41 homers and 1,012 OPS last year. Yeah. He's uh, four for 33 in the last eight games of April with 13 strikeouts. He had one extra base hit. In those eight games. Then he had two singles today at Seattle. His first, it was his first multi-hit game since April 21st. But he also had three strikeouts today. That's what's crazy. He's had multiple strikeouts in five consecutive games. He's had 12 multi-strikeout games in 29 this year. He had 10 multi-strikeout games all of last season. He's had three, three strikeout games in the last four years, or the last four days. That's one more than he had all last season. In the last four days, he had two three strikeout games last year. Anyway, I won't go through all the things, but that's you get. I, I talked about last week how his whip percentage is the highest increase this year in the majors among qualified hitters after being the the highest decrease last year. Yeah. Now it's even up since we talked a few days ago. It's up to thirty point seven before today. Probably jumped a little more today because he struck out three times. But that's his whiff rate, 38.7, which would be a career high. How is his career? 15.3% year-over-year jump from last year. Yeah. I mean, I bet he cleans it up. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just part of the game. But I would uh, – I'd bet on him still having a pretty good season. It's just – I mean, it's it's one of those funks that nobody's immune to in baseball. Yeah. The strikeout percentage increase, that last one was not whiff percentage, which is just one uh, swing, obviously, whiff. 15.3% increase in his year over year strikeout rate. Cause he had that thing down to 11, four last year, 11.4%, which was what amazed everybody about. And it was yep. directly tied to how good he was last year. His strikeouts were so far down. He was hitting everything. And I think we all kind of assumed that once he got that low, he figured something out. He'd never be up close to where he was before again, maybe go up a few percent or whatever, 5%. Yep. But we kind of thought this was beyond past him now that he'd figured something out and would go forward as that type of hitter. But we'll see. Whether you're a world-class athlete or a podcaster, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being and proper recovery for top-notch performance. That's why I'm excited that Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of 755 Forever. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhancement System, or EE System. If you haven't heard of the EE system yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash forever to learn more and find a center near you. That's U-N-I-F-Y-D healing.com slash forever. No material or testimonials on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new health care regimen. 
including EE System. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can in the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member of DIC. Matt Olson, he didn't clean up anything. He's a cleanup hitter. He hasn't homered in 21 games. He's 5 for 49, 102 average, with one extra base hit and five RBIs in his last 15 games. After leading the majors with 54 homers and 139 RBIs last year, when he hit a career best 283, 993 OPS, he has three homers, 16 RBIs this year. He's hitting 206 with a 706 OPS. Yeah. Still among the hard hit leaders, which is good. I mean, you're hitting the ball hard. You you got to think it's going to start. Things are going to start falling for you. But um, and he's hit quite a few balls to the warning track that have been caught. And we've talked about this. I tweeted something about it. Somebody asked me, do I think the balls are any different? I said, yeah, I think they are. Because we're seeing balls die for both teams in every game at the warning track. Braves didn't hit home runs out in Seattle. This is a they didn't hit that, one, did they? No. Yeah. Paul wasn't carrying, but they have, they've stopped hitting them. And last year they hit 307 homers. Yeah, I would, I think that would probably explain a lot too. You know, like if the ball, yeah, the if Acuna, homers too. Acuna hit a ball to center, I don't know what game it was. It was yeah. a week or so ago that yeah. I thought that's way out. He looked, it. he looked like he thought he got it. And somebody posted online that he hit a, a ball with the exact same, you know, exit velocity and angle or whatever and it went 430 and this one went like 390 but when that happens you're like you're going to swing a little harder you know so you're going to try a little harder you start trying a little harder putting a little more on it swinging a little bit more you swing and miss more yeah and i think that's that would probably i mean i had that thought i think it was the ball riley hit last week right before they left town he hit a ball to the track and he jogged like it was gone it was off a classe yeah. And it looked like a homer, you know, it, he barreled it and it just died at the track. But that happens to you a few times. You're going to start swinging a little harder. I mean, that's, I don't think, I think that's like the number one thing that happens. So I agree with you. It seems like the balls aren't, aren't as juicy as they've been in the past. Meanwhile, the Braves still have the best record in the majors. Yeah. 29. With, Phillies also with three got, superstars struggling. Phillies right there with them. Right there with them. Ronaldo, on my stock ups, I had Max Freed, Chris Sale. Ozzy Albies, Marcelo Zuna, and Joe Jimenez. Could have put uh, Lopez, obviously, but he had his first bad start in his life. It wasn't terrible, but it was his yep. first not really good start. First time he didn't go deep into the game. So I didn't put him on there, but he's been the brave best starter overall yeah. so far this year. But I put Max in there because of, uh, I mean, he had he had a 329 opponent's average through four starts. Lowered his ERA from 771 to 402 with his last two starts. 13 strikeouts with two walks and 15 scoreless innings, giving up three hits in his last two and 15 scoreless innings. So I'm really eager to see what he does. Chris Sale, I mean, we've talked about him so much. He had gone seven seven innings in three straight starts. He only went five today because he got his pitch count up. The Mariners were really working the counts, but he pitched another great game. He had 100 pitches in five innings, but it was solid. And uh, I put him in there just because not only how well he's pitched, but the presence that he's had and yep. the effect he's having on everybody in the game when he's pitching, he's so fiery, so competitive. Everybody's, he's like a bell cow in the rotation. Everybody's kind of feeding off him and Lopez. So it's been uh, everything the Braves could have possibly hoped and knock on wood as long as he's healthy. I mean, so far, really healthy. But after going seven innings, three straight games, he goes to the Mariners again. One run, three hits, five innings, no walks, season high, nine strikeouts today in five innings. Yeah, he's doing what you're supposed to do with that stuff. Lowered his ERA to 3.44. He's had one bad game. Five runs allowed in seven innings in Miami. His other five outings, four and one with a 2.92 ERA. That's what you're supposed to do when you have a 96-mile-an-hour fastball from that arm slot and you're 6'5", or however tall he is, and, and you slider. have a disgusting slider. Like That's what you're supposed to do. So I mean, I never really worried – would he be able to get outs or not? It's just, you know, can he stay healthy? He's had some injuries. But if he's out there, 
I mean, he's kind of like, well, we used to say that about Kimbrell when he was in his prime. It's like, all he's got to do is get to the park and he's having a good day. If he can just make it to the field in one piece, he's yeah. probably putting up a zero tonight. And I think Sale's the same kind of talent level where if he's just – gets onto the mound, it's it's going to be hard for things to go wrong. And it's definitely going to be hard for things to go wrong consistently. And he was that for years. Yeah. Years and years. But yeah, I thought really impressive, but not, I pointed out his last two starts have been against first place teams, Cleveland, Seattle, yeah. and the other league. 15 strikeouts with one walk, two runs allowed in 12 innings in those last two starts. One walk? One walk. Yeah. That, I mean, that's what all he's got to do. <laughs> Limit yeah. those walks. Nobody's going to hit him. So, yeah, that's uh, – and then Ozzy Albies, you know, he comes back from the 10-day minimum stay on the IL with a broken toe. No rehab assignment, just picks up right where he left off. He's gone 9 for 25 with four doubles, four RBIs, and six games since he got back, including three multi-hit games. He's got a uh, career-best 14-game winning streak – a 14-game hitting streak going right now. And among second basemen, he leads the NL – Second baseman in 18 RBIs in 21 games, and is second with 11 extra base hits. Even though he's got like 50 percent fewer plate appearances and, and games played than the guy than the guy right behind him in RBIs, and could tell Marte who's the only one with more extra base hits than him has like 50 percent more plate appearances. So, and then Ozuna, I mean, we can't what what's going to say about him? Even even the last couple of weeks, he's hit 268 with two homers in the last 12 games of the of, of April. He still finished the month, how hot he was. He still finished a month with an NL best 636 slugging percentage, hitting 327 with 1,036 OPS. He just looks so locked in. I mean, every time he steps in the box, you're just expecting a laser right now. Yeah, he's gone nine games without a homer, and he still leads the majors in RBIs and is third in home runs with nine. So, And then Joe Jimenez. I mean, I looked up his thing. He's got an ER, a 2.25 ERA, which is the lowest among the Braves relievers who have 10 or more appearances, right? But his expected ERA on StatCast, 1.25, exactly one run lower, which is the 99th percentile among MLB relievers. And that goes back to the other day when he gave up three, yeah. two miss hit singles and a bunt single, all of them at 31 miles an hour or less off the bat, and they all went like seven or 10 feet. Three, then two run run score off after those three hits. So... His expected batting average is also 166, which is real batting average allowed. It's 200. So expected 166 average and a 125 ERA. This guy's been dynamite, man. He's got that invisible. Uh, it's something I don't think you can teach, but the guys that have it, I don't care what the radar gun sa- says. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you see him. He he makes good pitches, but he also – he'll miss middle, and it's just fouled off. Yep. It's something about spin or extension, something that he does that – the hitters just do not see that fastball. Yeah, I mean, he throws hard, but not not relative to other relievers. He's not throwing 99, 100. He's it doesn't like match up with the swings, yeah. you know. Like, you, you would think the swings he gets, you'd think it's 100. Yeah. But it's 95, yeah. 96. Good slider. So, I mean, yeah, you still got your three, arguably your three biggest star uh, hitters uh, are all struggling or have been. But when you got Ozuna doing what he's doing, you got Ozzy doing what he's doing, you got other guys kicking in like Darno for a week was unbelievable. Yeah. So, and then you got the pitching that you've had. It makes up for so much. So, you got to think when they say, when you, because these guys are going to get hot. They're not even hot yet. (laughs) You get about two of those three hitters hot. Yeah. You're going to see some pounding. They're going to be, they're going to beat some teams really badly. Yeah. So, but so far, yeah, 20 and nine, despite, you know, Injuries and struggling hitters, struggling sluggers, and all that. So they got to like where they are. Big series yeah. coming up, at Dodger Stadium. Now we'll see what happens. They got three at Dodger Stadium, and then they come home, have an off day on Monday, and then a two-game series at home against Boston. Those those Red Sox series, those two gamers are so stupid. And, then and another off there. day, and then another off day. I guarantee it. Yeah, it's. I hate that. I don't know why they do it like that, but. The last you thing you go, need in the regular season is is yeah, two off days in four in days. Four days, and then you go to New York for a three day series against the Mets. Mets are playing. Eh, they were really hot. They've cooled off a little bit, but they'll play them tough up there probably. But it's only as a standalone three game series. Then you, uh, then you come home and you got three against the Cubs and three against or four against the Padres. So. And then we go up to Chicago and play the Cubs again. They play the Cubs twice in about a 10-day uh, span. 
six games in about 11 days, 10 days. I never liked that as a reliever. I bet, yeah. Guys seeing you, kind of like yeah. a long series, kind of like in a long playoff series. I don't want, I want them to forget my bullshit before they see me again. You know, you, sometimes you face a guy three times in a series and then a week yeah. later you're facing him again and they take a little bit, you know, they just see the ball a little better off you. Same with starters, you know, some back-to-back starts against the same team's tough. Yeah. Man, we we spoke too soon about uh, about Mike Trout. I mean, I mean it's just, it was inevitable. It's just, it, it cannot, he cannot yeah. stay on the field, man. I think it's hard. It's hard field. being that big, you know, being, being big, big and lean, get and playing center field. It's like we talked yeah. about with Andrew, and he's doing it on mundane things too, like not even like jarring or anything. He's doing normal baseball stuff, yeah, and tear meniscus. You know, you saw him going from second to third. It looked like he was all of a sudden he was a hundred years old, yeah, because he felt it. So. He'll be back this season, but yeah, write it off again because it won't. It's going to be another year where he doesn't put up huge numbers because he's going to miss so much time. Yeah, and they're locked yeah. in with that contract. They can't do anything with that contract. When he's out there, though, it, my favorite meniscus story is Chipper. Oh, just, just I think he was just walking like he was turning around, you know, at the end of a yeah. end of like team stretch. He was turning around and tore his. <laughs> I don't think he did any rehab, told the Braves he didn't need to play in rehab games, comes back, yeah. hits a homer, makes a bare hand play. It's like. At Houston, it's like riding a bike for him. At Houston, that was that. That was in the last couple of years of his career, wasn't it? I think it might have been his last season or 2011 or 12. Yeah, he eschewed the rehab assignments in the last years of his career. He's like, I'm he not said, wasting nah. time going. To- <laughs> I'm not wasting these legs on a on a rehab game. <laughs> Throw me out there, I'll go deep. And he did. I remember there was some kind of there was a they were trying to get him to go rehab though they wanted him to play in a game or two and he just said nope yeah he had I'm done a, he had done a couple of rehab assignments earlier like a few years before that when he had other injuries because yeah. I mean, it was a big deal you know he like drove his truck up to Rome yep. sold out the ballpark said ahead of time he's coming did one in in, uh, in uh, Gwinnett <laughs> they love like, seeing Chipper come you know oh yeah fill the ballpark pay for the spread. Yep, and you get to sit in those minor league stadiums. I mean, you could sit three rows up. Yeah. Actually get a front row seat to it. Yeah, and since you can't see them on TV anymore, that's your best chance you get to see. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, we appreciate it. We'll talk again uh, after the Dodger series, and uh, we'll talk late. We'll say talk late Sunday night from L.A. about what we we'll see out there at Dodger Stadium. Supposed to be beautiful weather. Imagine that. It's been beautiful here in Atlanta while they were chilly out in Seattle. All right, well, I feel you. I feel you, people out there who cannot watch the games on on cable, and hopefully they'll get it. Uh, hopefully they'll get it worked out. But I don't know. They're so it's so screwed. Seven fifty five forever. We are out.